hola, ¿qué tal? Welcome to Cheekies and Chill. I'm your host, Cheekies, and I hope you all are having a happy Monday. It's been a crazy month for me already. My new book, Unstoppable, was released a couple weeks ago, and I've been on the road on a book tour. It's been so beautiful seeing all of you guys, seeing your faces, and today I will be answering some of your questions. This episode is going to be so much fun, you guys, so let's get into it. This is Cheekies and Chill. I'm really looking forward to today's episode because it's a chance for me to interact with you guys. A while back on Instagram, I asked you guys to send your questions. Since there are so many questions, we're going to split this in two episodes. This will be part one. So let's do it. Let's get into it. So let's start with question number one. This comes from Karina. She says, I would like to know how you got over the trauma in your life. Ooh, okay. Well, I have been through quite some bit of trauma, you guys, but that's the thing. I don't see it as trauma. I see it as a way to grow. I always thank God for every experience, for every tear, for every smile, every morning. I'm like, God, thank you for everything that I've had to go through, even if it's hurt and it's been painful. It has molded me and helped mold me into the woman I am today. Not seeing it as something traumatic and something horrible, but bringing out the positive in it, because there's always something positive that comes out of a painful situation. And then just keeping my eyes on the light at the end of the tunnel has always helped me. I say that so much, but it's really what has helped me. My faith in God. Nunca me suelto la mano de Dios en todo lo que hago, especialmente cuando estoy pasando por momentos difíciles, dolorosos, y me comiendo a él es lo, to me, it's the best advice I can give anyone um, when they're going through a loss, you know, of a loved one, a loss of a relationship, a loss of even a relationship with your family members, whatever the case may be. I always say, just get on your knees and pray for strength and try to just keep telling yourself this too shall pass. So that's the best advice that I can give you. Okay, so question number two comes from Alexandra. She says, Cheekies, what's your new outlook on marriage and kids after divorce? Well, I believe in marriage. I believe in love. I am, uh, I love to love and to be loved. So when it comes to kids, I'm a little more, not hesitant, it's not the word. I'm just a little bit more careful, I guess. I, I want to make sure that the person that I'm going to have kids with is a good person. Obviously, we all have not so good sides of, our, of ourselves. That's just how it is. But I think that for me, when it comes to children, it's like, will they? Will this person be a good father? Will they be there? What What is their track record? How are they with children? How are they with animals? For me, it's like if they treat a dog right, a, an animal that's helpless, they're going to be great with kids. You know. So I see all of that because even if the relationship with that person doesn't work, I want to know that I can lean on this person to have a child with, that I like this person enough to say, okay, I'm going to have to see you for the rest of my life because we're going to share a child. So that to me is so important. If not, then even if I can't find that person or whatever the case may be, because this is just general, you guys, you know, but um, <laughs> but if I can't find that person, I wouldn't mind saying, okay, I'm going to have a child by myself. You know, I'll go to a sperm bank or something like that. I am with Emilio and I think he'd be a great father, of course, but I'm just taking it slow when it comes to to children. As far as marriage, I'm open to the idea. I, I want to be married. I want to be a bride. I loved being a bride and I wouldn't be opposed to getting married again, to be honest. It's just finding the right time and todo ese a su tiempo, ¿no? Así que I didn't want to be jaded in regards to that situation because I feel like everyone's different and not because that situation, my first marriage didn't work, doesn't mean that my second can't. Uh, so yeah, that's my outlook on it. Question number three comes from Alyssa. She asks, are you good at forgiveness? What would you tell anyone trying to learn to forgive? Ooh, okay, this is good. I'm all about forgiveness, you guys. I am good. I'm good with forgiveness, I have to say. The way I see it is, who am I not to forgive? I'm not perfect. I've made mistakes. I want God to forgive me, so I'm going to forgive the person, even if they haven't asked for forgiveness. Because again, you guys, forgiving someone is a gift that you give yourself, not the other person. It's something where you're like, I release myself from this pain and I also release you. And it just gives you so much peace. It gives you this feeling of liberation and not having to carry that pain around. So 
I'm huge on forgiveness. I think it really does make you a happier person. And when you're holding on to resentment, that makes you sick. It really does. It causes even health issues, you guys, when we are holding on to resentment. So it's important even for your health to forgive. That doesn't mean you have to forget. You can work on for on forgetting, but forgiveness is definitely key and, and knowing, okay, I forgive you, but maybe I'm going to stay arm's length away because I haven't forgotten about this, but I forgive you. You know what I mean? And what I would tell someone that's trying to forgive is just to see it that way, to see it as this is a gift for myself. And yes, it's difficult, but if I forgive you for something that maybe you haven't even admitted to, something that you haven't even recognized, it's going to be healthier for me. It's going to be healthier for me for my future. And it's going to give me those wings to just fly and accomplish my dreams and my everyday goals. And now that we're on the topic of forgiveness, for those of you that don't know, I do have a book called Forgiveness, both in Spanish and in English. So we have Perdón and Forgiveness. And I talk all about forgiveness and the journey of forgiving because it is not easy. It's easier said than done. But I hope that my book can give you even more insight on this topic. So that was a good question. Thank you. Question number four comes from Dejane. I'm so sorry. I hope I'm not pronouncing your, I'm like butchering your name here, <laughs> pronouncing it wrong. I'm so sorry. But she wants to know when you can expect new music. Ooh, nice question. Okay. So new music coming like now. Okay. Uh, we have Quiero Amanecer. We're working on the third single of the fourth album. The fourth album comes out in April. God willing, you guys. Help me pray that we're able to finish the album because <laughs> I've been so busy with the book tour as well. So um, getting into the studio and getting all that done, and I'm such a perfectionist, it's been a little hard. But I'm hoping that April uh, we will have a new album, which would be my fourth album, you guys. So, And we're working on singles. So yes, a lot of new music this year, a lot of new music. I have a lot of ideas, you guys. I'm hoping to do at the end of the year something very special, a project that's very special to me. So once we get this one, which is Se Llama Abeja Reina, is the title of the album, Abeja Reina, then we can work on this special music project that I have in mind. Woo! I love, I get so excited when I talk about music. Okay, so question number five is also from Dejeuner. Oh, I like that name, but hopefully I'm, I'm pronouncing it correctly. Okay, so this time she wants to know... In the past, you've mentioned not wanting to have any kids, but more recently, you've become more open and even excited about the idea. What changed? You know what? I think for the first time in my life, I'm dating someone that makes me feel excited about having kids because I feel like he'd be a wonderful father. And that's what's important. I, even though my unborn child, you know, isn't here physically, I think about this kid, you know, girl or boy. And I'm like, I, if something happens to me, would I feel comfortable leaving my child with this person? I love his family. Um, they're really great. His mom is amazing. His grandma is, honestly, I feel like God gave me a new family, to be honest. I know that sounds weird, but like, obviously, yes, a new family, but I just, I don't know. They're, they're wonderful. So I, I think that they would do a really good job helping him raise my child if something were to happen to me. So I think of that and he just makes me excited. I know he wants kids, but we're having so much fun together that we're just right now we're like, no, we want to travel. We want to do all kinds of things. But guys, the truth is that my mommy clock is kind of ticking. So I have to make a decision kind of quickly. I'm just letting it be. I've said it, you know, before I'm just letting it be. I'm not, it's like, I'm not wanting to, but I'm not, not wanting to. I hope that makes sense. I'm just kind of open. So if it happens, lo que Dios quiera, and I don't know, I just feel like it's the person that I'm with that I'm like, hey, if it happens, I'll be, I'll be happy. I'll be like, all right, cool. Let's, 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 you know, roll with the punches on this one. So thank you for that question. Uh, question number six is from Deya. She says, have you been able to watch your mom's Monterey concert footage? Ooh, yes. In fact, I have. Johnny is the one that has it in his hands right now. We have a lot of plans for that footage. It is, I have not watched it in detail. I think what your question is, is if I've been able to watch it emotionally, because that's when she sang her last song to me, Paloma Negra. That was the last song that she basically dedicated to me publicly. And I felt like it was her way of saying, I'm sorry that she missed me. So if she wouldn't have done that, you guys, I think I would have, it would have been a lot harder. 
it gave me peace to know that my mom was thinking of me at her last concert. Well, obviously she didn't know it was her last concert, but at her concert. And I knew, I knew we missed each other. I didn't, I knew it was just a matter of time. So I have watched it. Every time I watch it, of course I cry. It's getting better for me to watch her and to listen to her in interviews because I can listen to her music without a visual. But once I get a visual, I just want to jump into the screen and hug her. And especially when it's like the reality show and things like that, it really makes me miss my mama. There's Jenny Rivera, the artist that I'm a huge fan of, but then there is Dolores Janae Rivera, who is my mama and her voice and her advice. And it's just, that's still a little hard for me sometimes. But with the Monterrey concert, I think I just have to take off my daughter cap and put on my business cap because now we have business decisions to make in regards to that concert. So I have to really sit down and watch it fully. But it has gotten a little easier. It has. The next question comes from Yesi Flakis, 91. She's wondering if I'll make music with my sister. She says it would be nice. Well, well, well. I'm so glad you asked me that question. We just had a meeting and we have a huge plan, my sister and I, to do something together and with someone else. I can't say yet because I want it to be a complete surprise, but it's long overdue, you guys. A song with my sister Jackie and I. Jenica, if you guys didn't know, has a beautiful voice too. My sister's can sing. I I'm a huge fan of their voices and Jack, I'm trying to convince Jenica to, to jump on this song with us and this other person. So it's coming, you guys. It's something that I've been wanting to do for a long time with my sister, Jackie. So yes, I agree. It would be really nice. Yesy flackies. <laughs> okay. So question number eight is from Jasmine. She says, Cheekies, what's your favorite Nell inspo or color that never fails? She says hers is red girl. I love red. I love white. I love French tip and I am huge on almond shape. I just feel like it just looks a little bit more natural. I love gel X versus like traditional acrylic nails. And when I have my inspo, it all depends on what's going on in my life. But my everyday life, like right now, my nails are like a cloudy white because I feel like it goes with everything and then they last a little longer. So when I do something crazy, I feel like me enfado after like a week. I get tired of it. So I'm like, I want to change it. But I go on Pinterest, you guys. That's like my secret. I love Pinterest. I go and I'm like nail art and I just get my little inspo on there. So I highly recommend that. They have great stuff on there. It just all depends on my mood. During the summer, I love bright colors. I'm all about bright pink, neon yellow, all that stuff. It just all depends. I'm not afraid to just be like, boom, you know, be out there, be loud. But my everyday, my go-to is a cloudy white, a white white, a black, red, and French tip, believe it or not. I like that question, by the way. Okay, number nine comes from Dora. Her question is, as a person who has been judged incorrectly, how have you overcome those struggles throughout the years? Hmm, this is, this is a good one. I have been judged incorrectly quite a bit. And it's very difficult. I think more so when I was going through it, um, even when they called me unfaithful, that's something that really got to me because I'm like, wait a second, especially when it's not true is when it really me cala that I'm like, dude, that sucks. And even when it's like true and they say something like it's still like, dude, what you don't even know the full story. So why are you even giving an opinion? But anyways, when I'm judged incorrectly, I think what has helped me now and I've learned is I need to focus on the people that do know me, my siblings, my significant other, uh, my team that know me and deal with me day by day and that they know that I wouldn't be capable of doing that or they know who I am. That gives me peace, me da tranquilidad. I ask myself every night and I'm like, did you do something good today? How do you feel with yourself today? Is there something that you need to apologize about to the person or just out loud and say, damn, I probably shouldn't have cut that person off or anything. I do like a self-check every night and that keeps you accountable, you guys. It keeps you on your toes and saying, okay, like, okay, well, I want to be better tomorrow. For me, it's like, I'm not, you can judge me, especially if it's incorrect. It's like, you don't even know me. I just check in with myself. I'm like, wait, is my heart in the right place? That's important, you guys, because you're always going to get judged incorrectly and criticized, especially with social media. You have to really be strong minded and emotionally. I always say have a hard shell, but a soft heart, you know, and just know it's part of life. And you know, you don't even know me at the end of the day, because if you knew me, you wouldn't be saying this. So that's what really has helped me. And I hope 
that helps you because if you're asking, it's for a reason. Hope that helps. The next question comes from the fan page, Edit X Cheekies. The question is, how is your relationship with Emilio going? Thank you so much for asking. Um, it's going good, honestly. He's he's a man of peace, guys. I've learned through this relationship that I've been so used to drama in my life that it's like now that I have peace, it's not that it got boring because it hasn't, but it's just like kind of like I would catch myself like thinking, is this too good to be true? Like, let me ruffle some feathers real quick so we can argue. <laughs> but I stopped that because that does not get you anywhere, you guys. But I, I, it's helped me understand a lot about myself. He's just such a peaceful dude, easygoing, no se mete nada. He's just so freaking chill that he chills me out. We're a great balance. Um, so it's going really well. I have nothing to complain about at all, to be honest. He works. He does his thing. He lets me do my thing. He is very good at explaining things to me, and he's so patient. Uh, it's just a very different relationship for me, to be honest. So I really appreciate you asking because it's it's going it's going really good. It really is. I can't complain. He's a great guy. He's a great guy. Shout out to Emilio. <laughs> Okay, the next question comes from Peaches Grandad 1X. The question is, which sibling do you have the closest relationship with? Mm, okay, so I have to say Jenica. I'm close to all my siblings, but I feel like my best friend is Jenica. Like overall, not just because she's my sibling, but I feel like I can speak to her about everything and anything. And she is very direct and very honest. And sometimes I'm like, dang, you're such an a-hole. <laughs> but um, she's very wise beyond her years. So her and I are really, really close. I think, también porque me busca mi tanto. Like, sister, what do you think about this? And, and, and when she has, she confides in me. So I think because me busca tanto, that also I feel the same way with her. But again, I can honestly say I'm close with all my siblings. We can talk about anything. They can come and talk to me about anything. I can go and talk to Jackie. She gives great advice too. So they're all, I'm close to them in different ways. But I would have to say, if I'm being honest, and you guys know I'm honest, it would be with Jenica. So yeah, siblings, I hope you guys don't get hurt. But they already know. And I think we all kind of go to, to Jenica. Mikey does. Johnny does. Jackie does. Or Jackie comes to me. I don't know. But we all kind of go to Jenica. Okay, so question number 12, Johnny972 wants to know what the right way to deal with a breakup. Oh, baby, a breakup. The right way, there is no right way, to be honest. It's just something that can help you. Is I don't know if you broke up with the person, it was a mutual agreement or they broke up with you, but a breakup is always hard and you just have to know that it is a process and you need to trust the process don't rush anything. I don't recommend un clavo saco otro clavo. It, that was just, that's just temporary. If you go and you start something with someone else, it can come and backfire. So give yourself time to heal, first of all. And with this person, do the pros and cons list, which means what are their qualities and what our, what are their faults, you know, and outweigh that. That always helps you just see things and say, okay, well, is this person causing me, did they, did they cause me more pain or more happiness? And regardless of the situation, I think that it's just trusting the process and praying yourself through it. I always bring up prayer and God because that's what's helped me through everything in my life. And heartbreak sucks. And I know it does. And it's just, embracing the pain and taking deep breaths and saying, okay, I'm going to be fine. Everything's going to be okay. Breathing through it. That's the best advice that I can give you. And give yourself, give yourself some time. Don't rush into anything. And if your heart is hurting, Johnny, te mando un abrazo. I really, really do. Because it's, it's, it's not, it's not easy. So I feel you. I feel you. Omi says here, she's reminding me of one of my sayings that I love all the time. Remember, Johnny, pain is a pass to promotion. This pain too shall pass, and it's going to bring someone better in your life if you learn the lesson that you're meant to, to learn behind this breakup, okay? This next question comes from Yvette. Okay, so she's asking, why things ended between my ex and I, my ex-husband and I, and um, why do I feel and why did I say that he's a devil in disguise? 
<laughs> I don't know when I said that, you guys. I don't think I said it about him. I said it about someone that came after our separation, which you guys, if you have the book and you've read it, if not, go read it. I talk about um, the devil in disguise, but I don't think I said it about about him per se. Things ended for many reasons, guys. Um, there's not one, well, actually, one main main reason, but it all boils down to lies. I don't care how big, how white, how black the lie is. A lie is a lie, and I prefer an ugly, the ugly truth, than a disguised lie. I just, I can't. I, I just, I cannot with that. So it really does boil down to the lying, because when you lie in a relationship it really brings out insecurities. It makes you rethink everything. And a, a person that you're with should make you feel confident and secure and, and, and emotionally stable. You guys are supposed to help each other and give each other that. So if someone's not doing that and, and pulling in their bargain of the deal, it just makes everything lopsided. And it brings up a lot of different things. So lying is a no-no, guys, in relationships. Just be straight up, like straight up. Like here it is, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So that's to make it short ish lying was a huge thing and then you will get the details in my book unstoppable so i recommend you read that unstoppable or invincible in espanol iris wants to know if i've ever regretted being a public figure because of the lack of privacy and constant cheese no honestly i have never felt that way i've never felt like i regret the path that i'm on i feel like i am definitely on the path that God wants me to be on because this wasn't necessarily my plan my whole life. It just something that happened and choices that I made obviously created this destiny. But no, I think it's, it's someone just asked me the other day, like, Chiquis, does it bother you? Like, te enfada que vengan y te pregunten por fotos en, en público. And I'm like, you know, I've learned to also switch that. There are times when I'm like literally in the middle of eating a taco and, and they come and ask for a picture and I'm like, I haven't even finished chewing my, you know, my food and like my fingers smell like cilantro and, and ajo. And, you know, I'm like kind of like, oh, sometimes I feel like me gustaría que fueran un poquito más prudente, more prudent when coming to ask for a picture. But I never say no to a picture. And I just see it as it's a blessing. And I, I've seen it this this way since I was little, since I've seen my mom, you know, everywhere we went, they would stop us. Didn't matter where we were to ask her for a picture. And I always saw it like these are the people that help my mom feed us. You know, they buy her music, they buy her products. And I was just always so grateful with them. And that's how I feel now, even more so. I'm like, you know what? They're asking for a picture for a reason. You know, they probably watch the things that I do. They're reading my books. They're listening to my podcast. Like the least I can do is take a picture. So I don't regret it. I, I feel like it's a beautiful way of helping others. And um, God has given me this platform to do something positive. And, and that's the way that I see it. So thank you so much for, for that question, Iris. Jocelyn Ochoa asks, what's the biggest risk you've ever taken? The biggest risk, I'm a risk taker. I'm all about taking risks. I feel like if you don't risk, there's no gain. Like you have to be somewhat of a gambler in life in order to achieve your goals, in order to be successful. Now, I think the biggest risk that I've taken, and, and, and I don't think I know, was, was getting married. Because I knew and I had that hunch and that feeling of he's not ready to be the man that I need, but I still took the risk. And it was a costly, painful risk. So I think that one has been the biggest thus far and the most painful. So without giving too much detail, <laughs> you guys can read it in my book, um, Unstoppable. I have to be honest, that's definitely the biggest. Edgar asks, I would like to know how you stay so positive and motivated. Every day I wake up and I say that I want to be a positive force in the world and anyone that is in my life and comes into my life and watches my stories on Instagram. And I just know that it's a part of my mission and it's what makes me happy to make others happy, to make them, you know, to inspire them. And the comments that I get in my DMs stating that, okay, I'm on the right track makes me feel good. So every day it's a choice that I make. It's an everyday choice, guys, like it is in marriage or your partner, like you have to choose that person every day. You have to choose to want to be better, you know, to, to have a better body, which means you have to do certain things. So it's a choice. Every single day is an opportunity. So to me, it's helped me because it makes me happy. So I choose to say, I want to be positive. I want to be motivated 
because if I feel positive, if I am motivated, then I can motivate others and I need to be the better version of myself every single day. So I choose myself, guys. I choose myself every day because by choosing myself, I choose you guys. Alfredo Martinez wants to know if you were to change anything from the past, what would it be? Wow. Um, I'm the type of person that doesn't really like to regret anything. I feel like everything helps you become who you are meant to become in life. I think if I had to change anything, to be honest, is opening up that door of getting tattoos. <laughs> because I was so young when oh, I was 18 when I got my first tattoo and then I kind of just liked it. And then now I'm at an age where I'm like, oh, why did I do that? So I think that's the only thing that I would probably change. Other than that, even like the situation with my mom and everything, it's taught me so much that I don't know if I'd say I'd necessarily change it. But something that I have a little bit more control over is my body and what I do to it. So I would probably say that because now I want to remove them all, to be honest with you, my my tattoos. Okay, next question is from Chan. Tal. She says, how do you and your siblings manage to not let arguments create rifts or damage your relationship as siblings? I love that question. And any siblings out there that are listening, I recommend for you guys to make it your mission. And sometimes it could be a mission impossible <laughs> to keep yourselves united. My mom is something that me inculcó, something that she embedded in me every single, almost every single day, I kid you not, I want you and your siblings to be different from me and my siblings. I don't want you guys to fight. And it is your duty and your responsibility as the eldest to keep you guys together. And that's what I've done. And I think because I have that so present that I'm like, okay, the best way that I can honor my mom's legacy is by taking care of her most precious jewels, her most precious treasures, which are my siblings. And I feel like that's how I'm honoring her and, and I'm honoring all her hard work and everything that she had to sacrifice for us is by keeping us together. And it's just wanting to be better and wanting that relationship and not allowing as the eldest. Um, and you don't have to be the eldest to do this. You could be the youngest, the middle child. It doesn't matter. It's saying, you know, wait a second, no matter what happens, we cannot let anybody come between us Of course, we're going to argue. Of course, we're going to disagree. But we let's agree to disagree sort of thing. Like, okay, we're all different. But at the end of the day, we have the same goal, which is being together, which is being good for our parents. Because cuando no están bien los hijos, pues eso me imagino que le ha de doler a los papás. So it's doing it for a better good, being close to your siblings. So I hope that helped. Idalia Barraza Lopez wants to know what I order at Starbucks. <laughs> She says, I would like to know more about your Starbucks drinks with low sugar or sugar free. She says she's trying to make a change. Oh, my God, Idalia. Um, that's wonderful that you're trying to make a change. It's the small changes that make a big difference. Like saying, "Okay, I'm not going to eat tortillas. I'm going to do sugar free sugar like you're doing now. Like this is great. I'm really, really happy for you. So what I order is a keto drink. It is an iced coffee, a splash of heavy whipping cream, two pumps of sugar-free vanilla, and one packet of stevia, iced. And you could do this. I like it iced better than hot, but that is what I get at uh, Starbucks. So, and if you don't like um, heavy whipping cream, always ask for a splash because if not, se pasan, se pasan. Uh, you can ask for a little bit of almond milk as well. I don't like anything too sweet, so that's why I do two pumps of sugar-free vanilla and one stevia packet. But yeah, try that. Let me know what you think. Okay, send me a DM, girl. Okay, so Sorullo says, what would the cheekies of the present day say to a cheekies who is 15 years old? Ooh, my goodness. You got me on this one. Okay, let me think back. Ooh, at 15, I was going through quite a bit, actually with my mom. My mom wasn't talking to me for two months. That was the very first time she had shut me out of her life was when I was 14 turning 15. So for my 15th birthday, you guys, I didn't get a happy birthday from my mom. I talk about it in my book, Forgiveness, if you guys want to go and, you know, catch the full story. But anyways, ooh, uh, what would I tell her? To be more honest. That's what I would tell her, that little B. <laughs> I would tell that little cheekies, um, be more honest, be straight up. 
Um, again, honesty is the best policy, guys. I, I could have that argument that I had with my mom was so silly. It was all because I wasn't I didn't communicate. Communication is key in every relationship. And I didn't communicate to my mom that we had gotten out of school early and that I was going to go across the street to have a hamburger and cheese, a cheeseburger and fries with my friends. Me dice, wey, pues, o sea, me dice, wey. Y no le dije, I should have called her and said, hey, mom, I didn't know. I had forgot we're getting out early. I'm going to go across the street. She thought I had deceived her. And I did, in a way. I should have let her know. So be more honest. For sure, I would be like, you know, just just be, communicate, girl. It'll keep you out of trouble. So I'll tell, I'll tell that cheekies that every day because, Jesus. Okay, so <laughs> good question. Soy Diego, G-A-D-O-Y. He says, he says, this is question number 21. Which prayer do you do when you feel you can't handle things anymore? Woo. Okay. So it's, it's not a prayer, but it's the serenity prayer. Well, I guess it is a prayer, but it's not like in the Bible. It's a serenity prayer. And it goes like this. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things that I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. That helps me so much in times of tribulation, in pain. Also, I don't know the Bible verse, but I know what it says. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. That's one that my mom always used. So those two are my go-to prayers. So I really like that question. Thank you so much for asking. Um, so hopefully it helps you. I am Armando J asks, will you ever make a full English album? Oh, I love these questions, guys. Okay. Yes. I don't know if I'll do a full English, maybe an English EP, which consists of five songs. Maybe I will do a full a full album. I don't know. But there are plans of doing English music. I want to do something very different. Like, guys, you guys wouldn't even know what kind of music. It's so different. Oh, I think this is my boss, B. Armando. It's my boss, P. Yes, I love you, Papa, by the way. Okay, he's like OG. He's from Dallas, so shout out to him. But I, I do think that um, it's going to happen. I just don't know when. I want to kind of give my Spanish music some time, but it would be completely different. Like, it, you guys would be like, what? Yeah, so I don't want to say what, but just think of Indiari, Sade, Erica, Erica Badu. Like, oh, ooh, ooh, it gets me excited. Lumerma. Ay, te quiero amor. Hi, this is one of my boss bees as well. La neta. ¿A quién prefieres? ¿A Chiquis o a Jané? <laughs> Ay, Milu, este, wow, qué buena pregunta. Yo prefiero, ay, es que las dos me caen muy bien. <laughs> um, ¿Sabes? Yo creo que Jané, porque Jané es la que le da la fuerza, la sabiduría a Chiquis. Y Chiqui es la que se encarga de ir a la televisión y hacer todo lo que está haciendo. Pero realmente, the mastermind es Jané detrás de todo. Así que yo tengo que decir, sin Jané no hay chiquis. Así que yo prefiero a Jané. Muy buena pregunta, me encanta. Okay, guys, thank you so much for taking the time to write me and ask me your questions. A lot of you wrote in just to show your support, and that means the world to me, you guys. So before I let you go, I'm going to leave you with this motivational quote. Well, it is kind of a quote, but I want to give you guys a little bit of advice now that we're on this like ask Cheeky's question stuff. I used to have this quote on the wall in the bathroom of my salon and it said, today commit an act of kindness. So I want to tell you guys to do the same. Commit an act of kindness every single day. Start today if you can. It could be as simple as opening up the door for someone, helping an elderly lady if you see her putting her groceries in her car, maybe offer her some help. I don't know, send someone like an edible arrangement out of nowhere, someone that you were thinking about. Doesn't have to be nothing crazy big. Send someone that you love or someone you haven't talked to in a long time. Send them a little message of hope. Hey, como estas? Thinking of you, praying for you. Just, I wanted to give you guys that advice. I think it's super important to always commit an act of kindness every single day because it's paying it forward. And I don't know, it just felt it in my heart to do that. So, lo reto, do it. And with that being said, thank you guys so much for listening to another episode. And like I said, we'll be airing a part two of your questions very soon. So don't forget to listen to Cheekies and Chill every Monday. Until next time, los amo. Mwah. 
This is a production of iHeartRadio and My Cultura Podcast Network. Follow us on Instagram at My Cultura Podcasts and follow me, Chiquis, that's C H I Q U I S. For more podcasts from iHeart, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows.